Hello everyone, and welcome to Yakuza Man. I'm Drunken Dan. Uh, let me give you some fun backstory. This isn't a live commentary track. I started my recording session last time, and I was about, like, 30 minutes into this recording, and then I looked over and saw the microphone wasn't plugged in. So, uh, fuck me. And at that point, I was like, I don't want to waste the footage, so this is the way I'm doing it now. You know, realistically, I probably would have saved more time if I just, you know, stopped and then recorded a new commentary track with, uh, you know, a new video, but whatever, here we are now. I've already done this. We're, we're already in this shit. ねえ、おじさん、暇? え、どういう意味って。ごめんね。やっぱなんでもない。でもどうすんの、さや。すぐに見つかるって。行こう。さよ。ちょっと。伊達さんの娘か。で、伊達さんは知ってんのか。あ、知ってるわけないじゃん。頭おかしいんじゃないのお前らよりはマシだ。俺は自分を安売りしたりはしねえ。か、関係ないでしょ。作りたきゃ作りゃいいじゃん。とにかくお金が必要なの。放っとい
whatever was up there starts roaring after we send the elevator up and runs, slips on the grease, falls, and onto the blast ruins and explodes. They were blast shadows. Um, now, these players are, are newer than I am to the game and don't know about knowledge checks. So I immediately rolled a knowledge religion, which, you know, I'm a cleric, so I have that. I failed my roll, but then they're like, hey, wait, wait, what are you doing? And then I explained to them that what you can do is you can roll different checks to identify a monster, which will then tell you everything about that monster and will give you an idea of what you're dealing with. Including, like, their weaknesses, their strengths, and all that shit. Usually how what I do when I'm playing, since I have the bestiary, is I just whip out the bestiary real quick, uh, go to their page, and then if I'm the player, and then I uh, have their stats there in front of me. If we make it. I don't do that otherwise. Um, but, uh, so I taught them that. We took them out pretty quickly, and we were smart because they were called Blast Shadows or Burst Shadows. And what happens with them is they explode 30 feet... They, they, they do a 30 feet foot uh, blast radius that does a lot of damage, and we blew them up from a distance, so none of them got caught in it. Uh, next session comes around, we go up the elevator, and we get immediately attacked by a couple zombies. Well, first we hear like a boomy voice like, who dares? And then I start yelling at them in my father for a farty voice, and I'm just like, where it's like, come over here so I can beat you with my shenanigans! You know, stuff like that. And then, um... A bunch of zombies come out. Uh, some hanged men. Uh, bloody bones. And then eventually, uh, after fighting them for a little bit, a, a necromancer shows up. Not a necromancer, a lich. Because that's fun. Yeah, yeah, a lich. And this is where things go to shit. Uh, I take a touch attack that, like, takes a huge chunk out of my fucking life. Uh, we tried shooting his... He had these flying wooden wings that we tried shooting, but that turned out to be his phylactery. And I'm still questioning the damage reduction on that. I'm also starting to question a spell that the DM used, because the DM kind of screws things... This DM screws up a little bit more. Uh, I gotta double check how, uh... uh what was it? The, uh... The, uh, the, the fucking... The one spell works, because, uh... And just double check something with him, because he might have done something a little wrong, but I'll have to check with him afterwards. Because he would customize a little bit, and uh, I don't think he knows the rules as well as I do at this point, which is weird. But then again, I'm playing with a group that are really high end in the game with the other group. And that's pretty much where we left off, still in the middle of this fight. Also, a giant flesh golem showed up, so that was fun. And we're dying. So it's probably going to be a TPK. So anyway, um, other group. So, uh, how do I want to start this? Alright, so, in this one, the party is a... is are two humans. Um, I'm playing... Uh, me and uh, one of the other players are playing the twin siblings of our previous PCs. I'm playing Irene Blackrose, a monk that the DM allowed to use an Earthbreaker with. As a monk weapon. Um, her younger brother... They're twins, but she's technically the older one, though she's the shorter one. Uh, who is a druid dinosaur archetype with a T-Rex named Am Amandala. Though he's me though uh, he's medium sized, so he's not like big yet. Um Who else do we have? Uh we have a halfling sorcerer named Ziggs, who likes to lie all the time. Actually, yeah, if I'm gonna give you like a quick uh description of the personality. Irene tries to act like a street punk and tries to act mad all the time, but isn't really uh, Kahiso tries to act cool and stoic, like their dad, but isn't really good at it. And he's also kind of weak, physically. By the way, here I was trying to get a heat action to work and it wouldn't. So, um... What was I saying? And then the final party member is a half-elf rogue named Rose. Um... Oh yeah, for those of you wondering why, um, <laughs> why Irene has, like, a very white-sounding name, and then Kahiso, for some of you that might know, sounds like Zulu. So there's a reason for that. So, since the Axe Tribe in our session became, uh, based on the Zulu Tribe, we, um, decided for their, their, for the kids of, um, Melita and, uh, Galvin that 
Melita named the girls. Uh, Galvin named the boys. Um, now, Irene's spelling is closer to Celtic and Irish. So, you know. So they both hate Chili X, so that's fun. But, uh, that's pretty much what went on with that. So first session, we went to the Pathfinder Society. We waited for a little bit, got to know each other. And then we were tasked with trying to open up this uh, puzzle box. Now, to kind of give you a brief summary of what happened with the puzzle box, um, I was useless. <laughs> I even tried... I, I, um... Was it... Uh, Kahisa was actually trying to solve the puzzle. Um, Gal... Oh, not Galvin. Uh, Rose and Ziggs were using sight of hand to try and, you know, see if they can pick the lock on the box. And I decided to roll a sleight of hand and rolled an a, a one and act almost knocked the box off the off the table and onto the ground, though um, a mandala caught it. So I was then not allowed to touch the box anymore. Uh, after that, we uh, Kahiso solved the puzzle as I rolled an intimidate check, just yelling at the box. Um, and two Paguampes came out, and they were just kind of fucking up the room. Uh, I stepped up to try and attack one of them, and I rolled a critical failure. And I ended up breaking some books in the vase instead. Um, I, I'm just going to be real. I missed everything. Uh, the rogue killed one of them really quick. Mandala grabbed one, then it like popped out of his mouth. Um, Kahisa stabbed it. Uh, what was it? <clears throat> Ziggs put one to sleep. And that was pretty much the end of it. And I failed all my rolls. After that, we were told that um, the Pathfinders are missing an, an agent. They had um, staking out the the Tower Girls, which are part of this like bigger mafia-like gang that runs the Underbridge area of that like works in the Underbridge area of uh, Magnamar, which is the city that we're in. So we go to look for information. Uh, first, we go to the um, the jailhouse see if she got picked up this a this agent because maybe she got under. She uh, got arrested while undercover. Uh, we know that she was not. After that, we uh, we got some information of talking to basically uh, talking to this old fortune teller dude. Uh, we went to a bar after. The, well, we first actually went to the bar uh, after because we we went there and met Han and Fuckbeard, who was a small man who was more beard than man, who uh, yelled very loudly, and my character did not like. Also, Ziggs uh, when we were leaving. Real quick, walked back in and wrote, had him re recommended he join the uh, the Pathfinders as secretary and had them write Kahiso as his um, yeah, reference. However, neither of them knew how to spell it. They spelled it wrong, and it was all caps. Um, after that, which uh, I tried to sense motive, couldn't figure out what he did, because I like doing that because it's funny. After that, um. After he told us to wait four hours, we went to the bar, gathered information about this uh, this old this like a uh, homeless guy who has information. Then um, went back to the guards, got the uh, information about the fortune teller. Then we came uh, the amazing Zography. That was the uh, the name. Actually, no, we already knew that. Uh, we got one of the names from one of them. But uh, so we went to the amazing Zography where we really I got fleeced for money, um, and we didn't really get anything useful out of him other than the slave boat rumor is fake. Um, we left him, and then we, uh, g got to the homeless man, who actually points in the right direction of Natalia, the woman that we're looking for. We go in, but well, we go to the building, and we're stopped by two, uh, guards, who tell us to hold, and we just keep saying, we just want to talk, we just want to talk, and, uh, they, they keep, keep giving us the runaround, and then, eventually, I roll an intimidate, just screaming at them, calling them little shits, and then they let us in. We go through, we uh, talk to Natalia, who has gone completely mad with power and thinks that she can take over not just uh, the Tower Girls, but all of Magnamar. So, because we're already in a bad spot, we agree to work with her where she wants us to kill her former boss of the Tower Girls. As we're leaving, however, um, who we thought was the leader of the Tower Girls was, uh, was there. If I was a little bit better of a storyteller, I wouldn't have said it that way, but yeah, whatever, fuck it. If I was writing a script, that's what I would have done. So we, um, go 
we come outside and she's there. She's like, where's the shard? And we literally didn't know what she was talking about at the time. So we said we said it didn't know. And it's like, you, you were talking to her. What happened there? You're not, you're not even really beat up. So, um... We figured out that he was gonna try and, um... She was gonna try and beat him up. I'll kill her. So we're just like, alright. She ordered us to try and kill you. Why don't we... We don't like her. Because she's a smug asshole who thinks everyone's beneath her. Uh, why don't we work with you? So we did with the explicit with the explicit intent to betray her when the time was right. So next session, because uh, we took a break after that, we go in. Uh, I nimbly stand on the, uh, the, the this this uh, plank to cross this hor horrible bridge, and I mask the roll of stealth check. I fail, and a bunch of troglodytes come out. First troglodyte runs up to the little uh, wooden bridge and breaks it under my feet. And I fall into the sewage and have to roll a fortitude save. But I make it. Thank God. Because it was fi it was filth sickness or... Filth... It was like uh, filth fever? I think it was filth fever is what it's called. But I made the fortitude save so I didn't need to make the save for the rest of the dungeon. Thank you, Christ. Um, so filth fever... Uh, didn't happen. Um, however, however, Mandala, the T-Rex, was not as lucky when he jumped down. So I get up, and I start fighting troglodytes. We just kind of like, all throw shit at them and eventually kill them in that room. Uh, Kahiso mends the bridge. I uh, climb up the side of the wall, because I see that the, the, uh, there's a ladder there, but it's fucked. So I climb the, uh, the wall, get out. Next room, more troglodytes! Uh, some up on a platform, some behind barrels, shooting arrows, uh, sh throwing shit at us. Literally, shit! We, they were throwing shit at us. Uh, they got... <laughs> they actually got me sickened in this room. Or was it the last room? One of the rooms I got sickened in. It wasn't fun. I, I got max roll and sickened. It was not fun. Actually, it was the, uh, second room I got sickened in. So anyway, I, um... First... When I see the the, the uh, little tro troglodytes on the platform, I look at that, and I remember what the troglodytes did to me. So I run up and slam it with my Earthbreaker, knocking the troglodyte down. And Amandala comes in for the kill. We uh, quickly clear out the... Uh, well, we, we try clearing out the ones there. I didn't want to cross that bridge, so I open a door. Where two of the guards that we met earlier were there, not quite knowing that we were betraying them yet. Um, I go in for a swing when he's, he's flat-footed. After Amandala literally wall runs across the wall to get a hold of one of the troglodytes, and he does. Uh, the other one is killed, I believe, by Rose, who just hucks a dagger at him. Because Rose spent most of the uh, fights hucking daggers, and Kahisa spent most of the um, most of the fights chucking spears. Um, and because uh, he had a lot of spears, he had like five or four, I can't remember. Um, and they're free. That's the cool part. So. We were doing that, and, uh, by the way, if you couldn't tell, I was brute forcing that, because I, I couldn't really, I was being stupid. Um, I go in for the swing on the guard, because he's flat-footed, however, my roll was a 10. <laughs> so he misses, he takes a sizable chunk out of my health. Uh, next turn, though, I kill him. Amando squeezes through the little, little uh, space to block off the other guard from the, la uh, from the uh, ladder to the, uh... Uh, well, from the room to uh, so the, la the ladder that's nearby, because we thought he might take that. Um, and then uh, Mandala eats him after everyone misses their arrows. I should mention the entire time, while well, um, Tower Girl Lady's there with us and her three guards. The three guards kept falling into the filth, and two of them got filth fever. One of them rolled a crit on a troglodyte and killed it. So we um, go into another room. There's these little mosquito things. We clear this room pretty quickly. Uh, in this room, everyone that, that everyone pretty much had to go through the filth, other than Ziggs, who rode on top of um, Amandala, because Amandala was a uh, yeah, Ma Amandala was um, you know, I, I just kind of like um, liked him at this point because he proved himself in a battle and you know trained ma ma trained animal, so didn't have to worry about handle animal. After that, um, we climbed up where uh, we met Natalia, who. Gave us an ultimatum to uh, kill her. And uh, 
Well, first, uh, uh, Kahisa tries pretending that this is the one we wanted, and then we learn that she's just the assassin. Um, my character wasn't in on this, so she's just cracking her knuckles, staring at this woman in the face. Because that's her target at the moment. Um, so at first, the, uh, the tower girl isn't sure who she's dealing with yet. Um, so we take on Natalia and her royal guard. And by royal guard, I mean three goblins with crossbows. And by crossbows, I mean... I th actually, no, they were crossbows. So, um... However, this was in the rafters, so we had to make acrobatics checks, we're flat-footed, and acrobatics checks every time we moved, and we're flat-footed. At one point, she greased the beams, that was fun. Uh, I fell down the very first time I tried to step onto the battlefield, and had to climb my way back up, but I didn't take any damage, thank god. But, uh... A lot of swearing from my character, though. After that, though, she didn't fall off, which was nice. I didn't have any ranged weapons, so I slowly trudged my way across the beams to get to this woman. As, um... She charmed, our, our, we believe, uh, Amandala, who just kind of just sat there chilling and didn't feel like fighting. So, Amandala just Amandala just kind of sat there as we all tried to cross. Uh, Kahisa, I forgot, summoned a dinosaur in the last fight, which was a little compy. Compy ran across the thing and started biting at, uh... Natalia, which, you know, he worked as a distraction. Um, we eventually started getting close to Natalia, and then she set the whole house on fire with the shard. Not even kidding. So I had to go through fire a couple times. Luckily, I never got scorched, but there was one time where we joked about her foot being in the fire still. It doesn't feel great, but it's fine, because she did, like, a hero pose, but she didn't tuck her leg in. But every other time, she made it. Eventually, myself, Rose, and the Tower Girl Assassin made it and um we were then face to face with natalia up close which she didn't like after natalia had killed the uh, summoned compy poor little boy uh we killed the goblins that were there obviously i didn't really specify anything with them ziggs um who earlier was rolling natural 20s with his crossbows was rolling really poorly at this point including a natural one he was also running low on spells after that we uh Started fighting Natalia. Natalia immediately... Oh, I forgot to mention this. One of the guards tried to throw me throw me off a cliff and kick me. However, my CMD is 25, so he literally kicks my stuff. So we described it as him kicking me in the abs, except I'm really fucking swole. So, I just, so he just got beaten to death instead. Anyway, back to up there. Natalia remembered that and decided knocking me off the, the bridge was a fool's errand. Or, well, the, the rafters. So he na knocked, she, she knocked Rose off instead, the rogue. And fell down, took a little bit of damage, but otherwise okay and was near the barrels where the uh, troglodytes were before. And then I, uh, Ziggs decided to run because things were on fire and he was going to get the hell out. Um, my character didn't know this, so... And uh, Natalia was bloodied and the other girl was full health. So she decided to instead tar to instead keep t to, go to go after Natalia. Because if she didn't, she would, um, it would have just made things harder and she didn't know Ziggs was there and she didn't want, even though she ban bickers at, at Ziggs, she doesn't actually hate him, finds him a little bit annoying, but wouldn't want to cause him harm. She has a, she's like a warrior code thing that, that uh, one of her things is to defend the weak at the cost of yourself. So that would like, doing something like that, which would have been reckless, would have cost um, him, would have potentially cost him his life or hurt him, and so it would be against her code. So she fights, decides to take out Natalia with non-lethal unarmed strikes because she's a monk, remember? So she goes in for an elbow, misses, and but her knee does not. And the first attack does one extra damage because it does half your strength modifier and she has a, th a three for a strength mod. So she knees Natalia in the fucking shin when she ducks the elbow, sending her flying off the rafters and into the barrels below like a fucking action movie. Knocked out. But unfortunately not stable because she took fall damage. Um, I should mention our plan was to try and take both the tower girl and this woman in alive. One for the pathfinders and the other one for prison. Because we there might be a bounty on her head. 
we took out the, um, so we took her out, and then we started to escape. Um, Ziggs was down there already, along with Rose. Uh, Rose also quickly, sleight of hand, grabbed the shard. They drug the bot. they drug the body out, because she wasn't dead. Uh, Ziggs real quick stabilized her. Uh, we drug her out, and, um, we, uh, she right away searched the body, couldn't find the shard. Where's the shard? Rose has it. Uh, Rose moves herself into a position to where we can flank her. Um, Rose attacks, misses, unfortunately, and then it's the Tower Girl's turn, and also her her three goons are still there. Uh, actually, the three goons didn't get to do anything. Uh, their turn never came up. Here's what happened. She knocks out Rose immediately. Actually, no, they did, but they missed all their attacks. That's what happened. Um, the, uh, Natalia, Natalia, uh, the uh, Tower Girl tries to attack Irene's brother. But, uh, fucks up. And she gets hit by a force, uh, a force damage attack by Ziggs. With un unavoidable damage, she takes Max, too. Which was nice. It's only a 1d4, but still, it's still something. So she gets, she takes that damage. And then, um... She, after attacking her, uh, Irene's brother, missing, though, uh, she steps back. Irene, st at pretty good health, because she did get a healing potion earlier. Steps into the force, taking damage, but only one. Thankfully, he rolled the lowest number. And then, I went for the attack, and I fucking hammered the shit out of this woman. Knocking her out, thankfully, she didn't die. So I was able to capture her. And this is where I have to stop talking. Kiryu-san, <laughs> ええ、翔太なら。あそこにいるのがそうです。お、ちょっと。伊達さんか。さや。え、お父さん。あの、お客さん困ります。どうけ。翔太、大丈夫さや。<笑> お前、こんなとこで。こんなとこで。何よ。今更父親面。今更な父親面。帰るね。さやちゃん。おい、何やってんだなんだおっさん。その子から手離せ。ああ、この女はな、うちの会社に借金があるんだよ。関係ねえから引っ込んだる。借金。ああ、この女、ホストクラブ通い詰めて借金まみれ。借りた金返さないって
Anyway, so Rose uh, got had that. Uh, we looted their bodies. We drugged the one to prison where we each got 100 gold apiece. So we, like I got 100, and so did I. So we were at, we were thanked actually pretty heavily too by the lady. Um, and then we turned in the uh, Natalia to the Pathfinders. And I'm going to have to shut up in two seconds because I'm about to knock out the last guy in three, two. Okay, I was a little off on my timing. Whatever, he's going to be knocked out in three, two, one. KO! あの子の父親だ。お前らのボスと話をさせろ。遅いっすね。伊達さん。一人で行っちゃったけど大丈夫ですかね。Well, uh let me summarize this real quick. So we're thanked, rewarded. Um, people who got, got uh, fell fever got cured. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot Zig's got shit in his eyes, and that was kind of funny. And he was blinded for a round. Kiryu-san, <laughs> でも来週までにお金を用意できなかったら、翔太殺されるかもって言うから。てめえの命を惜しくて自分の女に何とかしろってのが本当にお前を大事にしてるなら、そんなこと言えるわけがない。でも私には翔太しかいないから。伊達さ
a, was it like a plus two knowledge religion, a plus one or two to int, um, and some other like nifty little bonuses. However, before she added the little piece to it, it came with a curse. Um, it was the curse of pride. And basically, this is what led Natalia to go the way she did and stop being the double agent and become just a complete psychopath. Uh, we... And that's pretty much where we ended off... Oh, wait, we ended off with, um, her concentrating on it and seeing a vision of the next, uh, shard, which happened to be actually still in the city. Convenient. And, uh, after that, we ended for the night. Oh, no, it went well. Our, um... Quad backstab worked, and it was great. And it was so much fun. I, I love kneeing someone off the rafters, and in general, it's probably one of my favorite sessions I've had as a combat character. Uh, there was a lot of fucked up rolls I made, there, which were kind of funny. In general, it was a fun session, and I really enjoyed it. But, uh... And that's the end of Pathfinder stuff. Normally, I can't actually finish it because I'm so focused on the combat. You know, actually, as an aside, for anyone who gets this far into the commentary, if you prefer me doing these posts, I might try to start doing them in post exclusively. For, uh, Yakuza Man. But that's up to you guys. Um. But, uh, I I'm definitely looking forward to more, um, Pathfinder. Seriously, I, I fucking love tabletop games. I do. Have, I did make up a backup round, a backup character because I wasn't sure if she was gonna live, because this was gonna this was gonna get nuts. Uh, my backup character is a uh, interesting beast. So she is a swashbuckler archetype that has a disguise. Um, her whole gimmick is she is disguising herself as a guy uh, because she's the daughter of a nobleman and is wants to go out and have adventures and fight evil and all that shit. Um, so she disguises her identity and disguises her gender. Uh, Character-wise, I'd probably have her act out two different personalities depending on which one she is, but probably won't do her true personality much because she'll most likely be in disguise all the time if I ever end up running her. I still like the concept and would like to run her at some point. But uh, that's uh, one of my more not jokey character ideas. I came up with her when I was trying to make a swashbuckler at one point. When I thought uh, we were doing a 5e campaign, I thought it was Pathfinder, so I started looking at like uh, swashbuckler builds. And then I ended up building swashbuckler, but a rogue, because that's how 5e works. Oh yeah, I forgot. Pathfinder 2 comes out this year, and honestly, okay, this is going to sound maybe douchey, but I have little to no interest in Pathfinder 2. Um, when I looked at the stuff from the uh, playtest, I really didn't like a lot of the changes to Pathfinder. A lot of it lowers the uh, customization of the characters. So, like, power attack can only be taken by fighters, if I remember. Um, like, the feats could- there's a lot of feats were now class exclusive. I didn't like this because a lot of what it seemed like when I was looking at it was that every paladin would end up the same. Uh, I mean, that could have changed now between the PlayStation, they might have fixed it to where it's less, like, this, streamlined. So, it's, the streamlining is nice, but I kind of don't like this, because I, 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 like I like customization, and it doesn't seem to strike that balance like, uh, 5e does. So, it just, it just doesn't really seem as good to me, and I don't really like the, um, retributive strike, uh, class ability, it's kind of lame. Because the way it works is you can you get a you get basically an attack of opportunity on an opponent if they attack an ally uh, within a certain square of you while you're there. So you're rarely going to use it because you're a fucking paladin. I mean, it, there's a couple points where it might come uh, come in handy in a pinch, but typically you're not going to be fucking using it. So it's kind of lame. And. uh... Yeah, I don't know if they changed that either. I'd have to look at Pathfinder 2's uh, stuff. Which, lord knows when I'll ever do that again. Maybe I will. But, like, 5e is better for customization than um, Pathfinder 2. At least from what I saw then. Because uh, Pathfinder had... Uh, no, Pathfinder 5e has um, your archetypes that you get after a certain level. And then everybody goes down on, like, an archetype tree. 
which can do various things. Like, for example, I have a... Oh, what is she? She's a Gloomstalker Ranger, which means she can see in the dark, um, and she's also considered to be invisible in the dark if you need dark vision in order to see her. I think it's like dark to low light vision. No, no, it is dark. I think it's complete darkness. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, it's got some other tricks to it, but um, I built her to primarily be a bow bitch because I want to try out a bow bitch. I haven't got to play her too much because unfortunately we're one of the people that was in that campaign is missing. But um, I enjoyed playing her for the uh, little like test run that I that I played with her on. My goal for both Pathfinder and uh, Pathfinder slash well just tabletop games in general is to try each class. The class I'm probably the least interested in is probably the fighter, because I've played like fighter type classes, like you know melee fighters, and they're just more interesting rather than just fight. Hell, the monk I'm building is like a weird fighter, and it's just more interesting because she's gonna have weird abilities. I mean, if I picked like an archetype, uh, either in either or, I could probably find something more interesting for a fighter, but eh. It's just a class that I'm less interested in, but I'll try to do something interesting with them. But, uh, God only knows if I will, you know, find something that's interesting. But, uh... But yeah, that's, um... That, that my whole goal. Because I do want to one day run a rogue. Uh, my goal, too, is to try and avoid some stereotypes for characters. For example, I already know the personality that I want for a rogue. I want him or her to, instead of being, like, the dark and gloomy or kind of cocky character, to instead, maybe they can be cocky, that's fine. But instead of, like, the gloomy, serious character, I want to make them kind of, um, a hyperactive jackass. And, uh, that's what I'm going for. But, anyway, I'm going to shut up now. Oh. <laughs> そしたらビデオの話は忘れてやる。いくらなんだ。店の付けが<笑> さつか。へえ、4か。丸棒じゃねえか。マジか。やべえじゃねえかよ。まあ、待てよ。お父さんさ、丸棒だったら押収した拳銃とか山ほどあんだろ。何そいつを回してくれたら、さやの借金チャラ
But yeah, I, I kind of want to try every class out. Um, I do, I still need to play a bard, but I need to play a bard in a way that I think it'd be fun without being just too disruptive. Because it'd be so easy to be disruptive as a bard. Oh god, I, I, I gotta think of a concept for one. Bard, bard's a hard one, and no, you don't always have to be a singer as a bard, I know that. A bard can uh, dance, paint... Uh, there's different things you can do. You can get creative with what bards do for their bard performances. I mean, I think I've mentioned uh, Barnacle Build a Sailor, which was a good, like this idea of a bard brawler hybrid. Where um, it was like he carried around a door and would do the whole uh, Barnacle Build a Sailor thing from Popeye. And that was the whole gimmick. But, you know, I, I never actually ended up running that character. But, eh. He'd be it. I don't think I'd, I'd run him. Sad thing is, hybrid characters are best built when you're higher level and you lose a character. As, as sad, silly as that might sound. And he's gonna get knocked out, and there we go, he's dead. ジョーダンにしても笑いやしねえな。しょうもいや。普通の女子高生なんだな。そうしてると。やだ。ジロジロ見ないでよ。お父さん。さや。俺はダメな親父だ。10年前お母さんとお前から逃げ出した。だから、お前に何も言えたぎりじゃないと分かってる。でもな。それでも一つだけ約束してくれないか自分をもっと大切にしてくれさえが幸せになるためにもっと自分自身を愛してくれそれでもお前が苦しんだり危ない目にあったら俺は守ってやる守ってやるから分かった分かったから泣かないでよ。桐生。おはよう、ダテ君。課長、何か。ちょっと話がね。何のお話でしょうか。10年前君は独断である事件の捜査を進め、その後のキャリアを滞らせた。2度目がないことは分かっているね。ええ。まあ。担当直入に言おう。今君が調べていることからすぐに手を引くんだ
And then I'm going to shut up again because I think there's more cutscenes. そのようすじゃ柏木に泣くまで怒られたって感じやな島部の王子聞いたで驚れの子分に手合い取るようやの錦山せっかく風間のお屋さんにいろいろと便宜を図ってもらったってのに俺が不甲斐ないせいでやっぱりわしが思てた通りや風間中男もえげつないことをやりよるのどういうことです本気でお前を大事に育てる気やろうややったらそんな連中選ぶはずないやろまあ嫌な思い散々させてお前が値上げるのを待っとるんやそんなこれだけは覚えとけ風間はな桐生に組を持たせたいだけや桐生のやったことは絶対許されへんせやけどな皮肉なもんやが桐生の評判はすこぶれえでまあ大物やったちゅうのはそれなりの貫禄がつくもんやシャバに出た時はもうお前には手の届かんところにおるやろな親殺しの下道でも貫禄さえつきゃそれなりに上になれるんがわしらの世界やひょっとすると目障りなくらいでかい組こしらえるかもしれんでも柏木さんは桐生が出てきたら俺の組で面倒を見てやれってどやこ目覚ませ面倒見られんのはお前の方やまあでもそん時は桐生もやりづらいやろうからのお前の
All right. With that, we'll be ending for today. I hope you guys enjoyed Yakuza Man, and I will see you next time for more Yakuza Man. Have a good day.